Resilience is how I would define Cameron. He's overcome a lot of things and people just don't know. All he does is go about his business and just play basketball. My mom used to go to the gym like every weekend for like two hours, three hours, and I'm not even realizing how hard my mom worked. And having that atmosphere and just people just being around me who just like work hard and that work ethic just translated to me playing basketball and training. He grew up seeing that his parents worked really hard at our job and whatever we did outside, I had the gym. We were at the gym every weekend. He is very driven with his work ethic. He's getting me up at five o'clock in the morning to say, let's go. He never really told me like when he got tattoos, he would just walk in the house and it's like, it seemed new. And I remember telling him, you're going to be destined for greatness. I have no idea <laughs> what you're going to be doing, but let me prove to you that I believe in you. So the first one here on my shoulder is an African symbol that means greatness. He just started talking about it. I got this for you. I said, it can't come off. You are destined for greatness. I remember he was so fast with everything. I always say, you know, you weren't my little boy for very long. He was big. Two months, he started to sit up, was walking at six months. Everything he did really quickly. It doesn't take him long to pick up something. I kind of realized Cameron was athletic when he was probably three years old. And so the first thing we did was we actually put him in swimming. He took swimming lessons when he was probably around three. He learned very quickly and he was really fast. I was good at freestyling, backstroke. Backstroke I was really good at. Uh, I think I like first place in like every race I got. But then as he migrated from swimming, he ended up playing football. Played football for about five years. And then I was introduced to basketball through one of the parents who had said, you know what, if he could play basketball the way he plays football, he's gonna do great. I don't know if he remembers, but he would be like, you can't dribble the ball up the court like with your left hand all the way. So for a whole hour, Hour, he just dribbling the ball with his left hand. I thought that he was going to be done because by the time he was done, he was tired. But he was like, Dad, I want to do it again. And I think that was when he ended up getting the bug. Let's go! I always knew he was going to play basketball because he always had a ball in his hand, always bouncing the ball in the house. Cameron stopped bouncing the ball. He was never without a ball. I played basketball in high school, so I always told his dad that he got the basketball genes from me. On every, like, how about me? What would you want to be when you grow up? I would just put NBA player, NBA all-star. I don't even know how to spell player. When he was in fifth grade, and all of the kids had to answer the question, what do you want to do when you grow up? And his answer was NBA basketball player. And I'm like, look, you got to have a plan B. Both my parents, they would just always say, college coaches really like well-rounded players. I just thought straight basketball, just wanted to hoop, that's it. From the time he's getting up to the time he's going to bed, he has basketball on his mind. And that's the only thing he's been wanting to do since elementary school. Basketball is literally life and death with him. So you take away basketball, I believe you actually really kill I was always that athlete who would just cruise through everything and not get hurt. First freshman high school game, I was trying to do a chase down block. I missed it, he pumped fake. I fell, when I got up, my knee was just like not pleasant. My heart dropped and I started screaming. The whole gym was just like quiet. When he injured his leg the first time, his dad was away on assignment. I'm not one of those parents that overreacts, so I was just sitting there. And then he just started yelling, not so good words. You know, it was very crushing because I'm helpless, right? I felt helpless of not knowing what is going on. The ambulance came, took me off the court with a stretcher. I get to the hospital talking about you need surgery. During that time in the hospital, my mom just always said, Godspeed, he's going to handle everything. Let's just focus on what we have to do now. Let's just take this time out just to relax and recover and keep having your faith, and he'll take care of the rest. Which is why I have a tattoo on that same leg I got hurt. He's nervous, he's scared. He's 15 and thinking about basketball. We had another doctor who was telling us that at one point he probably won't even be able to play basketball again. There's no way in the world I can tell him that. I was in that era where I was depressed and just wasn't in the right state of mind. I felt worthless, like I couldn't do any sports. It was a devastating part of my life and I had to figure out like how to overcome it. A lot of people don't know what he's gone through, right? He broke his tibia twice in the same year. It takes a mental toll on him because he wants to be on the court. 
and help his teammates try to win. He's very, very, very loyal, and he just wants to be able to contribute. I know it was tough for him, but he didn't show it. We actually found another rehabilitation center, and these guys were absolutely phenomenal. They worked with him from his sophomore year all the way up through his senior year, and he was able to play basketball at the highest level that I've ever seen him play. And as a result of that, they end up getting BCL Player of the Year, junior year, and also his senior year. For him to be able to achieve those things is just a testament to his work ethic. By the time his senior year rolled around, he's in McDonald All-American, he's at the Jordan Classic, he's representing the USA team, and now I start to see things come to fruition. As time went on, getting all those colleges looking at me, it was a different type of feeling. Not just being in it, but like succeeding. You know, he's very humble. He's not into a lot of accolades, but he's also hungry at the same time. He's going to go 150%. On the court, they say I have a straight face. I don't smile or anything, but I'm in a basketball game where I'm trying to win, and I'm just locked in. I don't think you should be smiling. His focus is on what I'm going to do next. He doesn't see anything else. I used to say to him during high school, don't you hear us yelling? One of my big things is, get a rebound, get a rebound. And he's like, I hear nothing. I don't hear any noise. It's like he has tunnel vision. So I got this tiger, and then it goes with the only strong survive. You gotta be animal in every aspect of what you do. I remember telling Cameron, if you get this tattoo, your mom is going to kill me. He said, this represents everything that I've gone through. I said, all right, you know what? Let's go and do it. I went with him to go get the tattoo, and it was big. And I'm like, your mother most definitely going to get me now. One day, I just happened to see it. I get a call from her yelling at me about him getting this tattoo and how big it is. I know she was shocked. Like, she had that face where it's like, why did you get that? <laughs> but then again, it was just, I mean, it's there, it's permanent, so you really can't do anything. I'm sorry, Mom. You can't complain anymore, so I, I just joined the party. I still wasn't sold on the fact that he was going to be going to the NBA because of the slim chances of folks actually going. So I thought that he was just going to be good enough to go to play at a D1 college and get a scholarship, finish four years, and be done. This tat is straightforward. It says believe with the crown. I always had that confidence in myself. I know I put in the work. That type of mentality I always had, that confidence. My dad, he has every jersey. He definitely like my number one fan. <laughs> the game is in California, and then he's in Maryland. He would hop on two flights just to watch that game or watch that tournament. I am most definitely his number one fan. Like, always try to get a jersey, always try to get a video, get a picture of where the tournament's at. He was that type of supportive fan. I have been his biggest supporter and number one fan from literally day one. He probably said I was crazy. <laughs> he would probably say that there are times I am over the top. He will also say that I'm fair, I'm very supportive, good, bad, or ugly. I'm going to be there 150%. The proudest moment for me is watching him become a young man. When he walks across the stage, other than crying, I will probably have flashes of different memories. It's a testament to his resiliency, his focus, and just his hard work. My heart's about to drop. Like, wow, now it's really time. I don't think a parent can ask for any other gift from God but to have their child be where they want to be. Mm. Got me emotional over here. <laughs> now my proudest moment is realizing that the things that we taught him and talked to him about while he was growing up, he's actually demonstrating those things. Just to see him carry himself professionally, I couldn't be any more proud. I probably won't even know how to act that day. Most likely probably be quiet because I'm, I'm reflecting on, on, on his life. And I know him, we're not done yet. That's always him, we're here but we're not done yet. I'm just getting started. Like, this is my first day on the job. This is just the beginning, just the start of my new journey.